So in this session, we're looking at pedagogy. Now, pedagogy is the different approaches that we take to teaching and the different ways that students can engage with learning activities to support their learning. So pedagogy and the teaching of digital technologies have long been closely associated. While many other teaching areas have had well-established pedagogical practices, such as approaches to teaching mathematics or English or drama, um, health and PE, digital technologies has come along after those. And so it's often been intermeshed with more emerging pedagogical practices, particularly those that involve technology. Now that's understandable. Um, if you're learning about using digital technologies and you're teaching about digital technologies, you're probably more likely to use digital technologies to support your teaching. And the students are more likely to be engaged with those technologies to support their learning. It doesn't have to be the case, but it does tend to be so. So first off, I've provided you with some readings to go through and explore some of the theoretical underpinnings of teaching and learning. Now, these are the major pedagogical approaches. So the first reading looks at behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism. And these are the main approaches we have in digital technologies around learning theory. Now, there are others, but these will stand you in good stead if you have some basic understanding of what they mean. Now, you'll no doubt explore these in some other detail in your more theoretical focused courses. But in the digital technologies courses, I just want to make sure that you've got a basic understanding of these fundamental um, theoretical approaches. So have a read through the, the um, that particular article and come to grips with what these terms mean. They are three distinct ways of going about teaching. So behaviorism is, as it says, very much focused around student behavior, but in a way that supports their learning. Now, fundamentally, it came out of Pavlov's um, dogs experiment, where he discovered that he could give dogs treats and they would respond. And eventually he could um, have a pretend treat and they would still respond. So they were trained to respond in various ways. And that's sort of what behaviorism is. It's a training process where we engage students with learning um, through various mechanisms that it, um, support particular behaviors that enhance their learning. It's more involved in that and have a look at the readings and you'll go through and explore that in a bit more detail, but that's the fundamentals. Cognitivism looks at the understanding we have of how, how the mind works, how we process information, how we form memories. Um, and it's very much about that process of memory formation and reinforcement and elements to do with um, brain science as it's coming on and sort of enhancing cognitivism. But it's very much our understanding of the mechanisms of learning. And then we have constructivism. And this is a particular pedagogical approach that looks at how students build knowledge. And it assumes that they start with some existing knowledge. And in fact, that's a very important aspect of constructivism. And if they then need to learn something new, it is going to be based on what they already know. And it's going to extend or expand or change what they currently know into something new some new understanding or more in-depth understanding. Now, one of the most fundamental aspects of that is if they have incorrectly learnt something, say if they have learnt about um, the seasons and their understanding is that it gets cold in winter because they're further away from the sun and it gets hot in summer because they're closer to the sun, that's a misunderstanding of the fundamental concepts related to seasons. And so they would need to be taught that that is incorrect and convinced of that and then their new learning about the axial tilt of the earth and having greater surface area uh, facing the sun 
uh, meaning that there's more sunlight hitting and um, greater amount of heat being generated. That needs to be of sufficient, um, sufficiently convincing for them to overcome their existing understanding of what is correct about the seasons. And if not, then they won't learn the new material. They won't, um, it won't be internalized into their understanding of seasons. And indeed, probably about 90% population currently, it's probably a, little bit, a fair bit higher than that, still thinks of seasons as being closer or further away from the sun, even though they've been taught it otherwise. So that's sort of a fundamental aspect of constructivism. We build knowledge, we expand knowledge, we deconstruct pre-existing ideas and reconstruct and construct new ideas. So have a look at the reading and explore those three um, approaches to pedagogy. Then there's another reading looking at how technology can influence pedagogy. For better or for worse, you're going to be the expert in technology in your school, or at least one of them. And so you will be expected to have some understanding of the educational uses of technology, how we can use technology to improve our teaching. So it's important that you engage with that, not to say that you need to fully embrace it in your first few years of teaching, because you're going to be so focused on the fundamentals, which don't necessarily need to involve any technology. But that said, you're no doubt going to be engaged with some uses of um, educational technologies, be it Google searching for lesson plans or using PowerPoint presentations and things of that nature. But educational technologies can go far beyond that. And that's what we're going to explore in the next set of readings about what innovations are occurring in pedagogy. Pedagogy is never static. We're constantly learning more and more about how people learn and new ways of teaching. And particularly through innovations in technology, we're exploring those approaches. And as a professional teacher, you will be expected to explore these as well. Again, with a caveat that in your first few years of teaching, you'll be focused on the fundamentals. But beyond that, you should be looking at what is emerging in the research around approaches to teaching. And in particular, what new technologies are emerging and how we can utilize those to improve teaching and learning. So I've got two sets of papers here um, looking at various approaches to teaching and the various technologies that can support improvements in our teaching. So we've been talking a lot about project-based learning as one of the pedagogical approaches for teaching and learning in digital technologies. Now, a more nuanced version of project-based learning was developed a few years ago called challenge-based learning. Now, this expanded upon project-based learning and included a few extra bits um, that you won't find in the traditional project-based learning um, structure. But it also provided a much more formalized, structured approach to project-based learning, and also very much supported by research. Um, a very extensive research project was built around challenge-based learning, and it was established that it was an effective approach to support students' learning. So have a look at challenge-based learning, and that will help you better understand project-based learning and ways we can go about using project-based learning for the teaching of digital technologies. Now, I've provided you with three examples of project-based learning. Um, some of them go into the early years, such as the Bebot Rescue in early years of primary. The Quidditch example is sort of the middle years, so upper primary, lower secondary, looking at the use of robotics to solve a particular problem. And then the um, senior, well, uh, middle secondary example is around a development of an app to address a problem around community development. The idea of these is to show you how we can incorporate the various thinking skills, um, design thinking, system thinking, project-based learning, uh, computational thinking, all of those elements in a way that addresses the curriculum that goes through a project-based approach. And particularly, you will see that it has a strong student-centered focus, where the students are coming up with the solutions, and indeed, in many cases, the, the problems, 
that are to be addressed by the project. So have a look at those examples. Now, of course, there's also activity-based learning. And you should be well engaged now with the Digital Technologies Hub and the various examples that are available there. And as part of my work with the Digital Technologies Hub, we developed an activity sequence examples. Essentially, they're like um, unit plans or semester plans or year-long plans of how to teach digital technologies over an extended period of time, um, addressing all of the requirements of the curriculum um, through a range of activities. So these generally don't include projects. They are more finely grained around small individual activities, although there are a few projects that come in there because some of the curriculum outcomes do need to address the project cycle. And so you'll find some elements of project-based um, learning uh, within those activity sequences, but that's not their primary focus. So again, a different approach, generally pedagogically, uh, much more teacher-directed, much more structured, and um, students working through discrete elements. But as we've been exploring in your assessment task, um, you'll be able to compare that with the project-based approach. So the final thing to look at this week is have a much more in-depth understanding of computational thinking. So I've provided you with a number of additional video clips to look through and explore the main components of computational thinking as presented in the Digital Technologies curriculum. And these will be abstraction, data automation, algorithm automation, digital systems, and interaction and impacts. So have a look at each of those video clips. There's also additional readings and activities associated with each of those so that you can better understand how to teach uh, the various concepts related to computational thinking. And finally, we need to always remember that our main focus of the digital technologies curriculum is around students creating solutions. So yes, they will be learning about computational thinking. They will be using various educational technologies and you'll be using various pedagogical approaches. But your students need to come out of the, your course in the end, being better able to create solutions to problems. How we enhance that is by allowing them to explore digital technologies and explore computational thinking and systems thinking. And then all of that is supported by the various learning activities and project-based um, activities that they work through. So it's just very important that you don't get so caught up with either project-based learning or activity-based learning or the curriculum outcomes that you'll find in the documentations. But keep in mind that big picture focus of what digital technologies is about. That will make you a much more effective teacher than if you're effective at teaching one little bit about learning about I don't know, um, binary. You might teach binary really, really well, but if it doesn't fit within the overall framework of them, of the students being better able to solve problems through their understanding of binary and how they relate that understanding of binary to computational thinking and design thinking and systems thinking and can use all of that to solve problems, then you won't have achieved the outcomes necessary for digital technologies. So, Look through the resources, engage with the other additional video clips, and I'll see you in the tutorials.